<laughs> All right, here we are back at draping, and we're going to finish the back bodice. All right. So I've already got it here on the dress form completed, so I'm going to walk you through what we did. Okay, so we finished the front completely. We got that done. So on the back, we made some uh, marks. We did our lengthwise grain, which was our one inch, our uh, one inch seam allowance right here. And then we did a cross grain, and we did that right here at the horizontal balance line. And then we marked, we went over and marked our the ridge of the shoulder line. We went in an inch and three quarters and went straight down, parallel. This is parallel to center back, so right angles here. And with that line, we're able to balance the back so that it's, it's easier to look at this line to make sure that it's perpendicular to the floor it, than it is to try and figure out where we're at with the side seam or center back. So that's the guide that we used. Okay, so we got, we got it on our cross grain, lengthwise grain. We have our bal uh, balance line. So then the next thing we did is we used that balance line to get this straight down, and then from there, we also marked our center, we had our center back pinned down. Now by having this balance line go straight down, that helps us to know how big this dart should be. Okay, let's just review this dart. First of all, what do we know about this dart from the drafting that we've done and some of the flat pattern work? We know that this dart is not a huge dart. This dart is for, to help bring in from the shol shoulders, the back, to the waist. So we have a dart here that is about five eighths double, so about an inch and a quarter wide. This dart belongs on the princess line, so that means that you should fold it right there on this princess line. Okay, and then it also, we want to carry this dart up parallel to center back, straight up the back, and how long should this dart be? Do you guys remember how long we want this dart to be? There's two different ways that we can figure out the length of this dart. Now your book might say, oh, make this seven inches long. But you're going to be working on lots of different sizes, so you need something that's going to be more specific to the size you're making. <coughs> so there's a couple of good rules of thumb here. Wasn't it just to like it kind of stops? Um, you, that can be one. You can look to see where the dart ends, where it kind of flattens out. And that's a good way to do it. However, where it ends and flattens out should be right at your underarm, or it can be the same length as the bust. If, if it ends up being longer or too much shorter than that, then I would go back and recheck that. Okay, so that's a good rule of thumb on this dart. Okay, after we get our dart in, then we're going to come over and we're going to do our side seam. We're going to pin our side seam in, and we're going to go underneath the arm, and we're going to mark where the end of this metal plate is. We're going to put a dot there, and, and we're going to pin it on the, wrong, on the opposite side of the little seam here on the side. And then we're going to... Um, we're not going to worry about this part right here yet. And then we're going to come straight up. We're going to maneuver this up. We're going to make sure we have more fabric, the fabric that comes off for the sleeve, having it come off. And I'll demonstrate this again when I show you how to do the design bodice. But just to kind of review. And then we're going to mark it here, and then we go up and do the neck. We're going to have to do some slashing to get the neck to go flat and then we're going to put in our shoulder dart. What do we remember about our shoulder dart? It's small, right? How big, usually? Like, what's a ballpark? Three-eighths? So about three-eighths double? <coughs> yeah? Very good. So you're going to make about a three-eighths double, so that's like um, three-fourths of an inch, and that's plenty big. Usually it's about three inches long. So you're going to mark, put this dart in, finish drawing in your shoulders, and 
Then you're going to follow the ridge along this armhole with these little dots until you get about across from the screw. Okay? Now, remember on the front we did a little tuck right here for ease? We're not going to do that on the back. We don't really need that. So we're just going to follow the ridge and when we're across from the screw we're going to stop just like we did the front. We didn't fill this in because we're going to talk about how to do that. All right? Okay, so we're ready to mark it. Then we mark the neck. Then we have a little L here at the neck that connects the neck to the shoulder. Then we mark our, da our dart with a little L on each side. We mark our end of our shoulder. We've already marked down the ridge and stopped right across in the screw. Then we're going to come down here and we're going to mark right underneath the metal plate. And then we're, um, we're just going to leave that seam. We're not going to do anything more. And then we're going to mark down here. And remember now, at the seam tape at the waist, instead of marking it in the middle of the waist, to get our quarter inch length, we're going to mark the bottom of the tape. But when we put it back on the dress form, we move it up to that in the middle of the tape so we get the length that we want. Okay, so let's take it off and let's review how we did, we finished marking everything in. Okay, so okay, now I've actually connected the front to the back, so I'm going to show you how to do that as well. And we've talked about that, but let's review that. Okay. Okay, so let's, let me just show you, I've already done this, but let me show you how we did that, see if we can uh, kind of go through these steps again. So what we did is on the front, we actually, when we got down halfway to that screw, we actually measured from center front over, and then we went down about two or three inches and did that line straight down. So we used a little bit of that straightening here, that line. Okay, and then we came down underneath the arm and we took that line and just dotted it in as if we were going to go straight down. And then we took another ruler and we went from underneath the arm straight over. And then where we have that connection, we went 45 degrees up, 7 eighths of an inch. Okay, now let me talk to you a little bit about the side seams, just to remind you on the side seams. Okay, so here on the side seam, I have marked in at the bottom of the metal plate, right here. And then we went, before I drew that side seam in, I went down an inch, and then I went over a half an inch for ease. And then I took that mark with this mark at the waist and drew a straight line, and that's my side seam. All right? And then I also drew this side seam. Okay, with the new side seam, that's when I went straight over here and straight up here. And then when I from this corner I went up seven eighths. And then I connected this line straight over. Now there is a right angle here. Okay, so I want to put that in. So you remember. There's certain places on here where we have right angles. And that is one of them. Okay, so then we have a right angle for half an inch, and then I continue doing a curve until I'm at the dot that's seven eighths in, and then I went up and connected it to this little straight portion. This isn't very long, but there is a little straight area here. Okay, then on the other side, I marked, you can't see the mark because I've already um, trimmed it for the seam allowance, but I marked it in, right below the metal plate. I went down an inch and over a half an inch, and from there I redrew my side seam, or I drew in my side seam. Okay, now this one, there is no right angle here. Okay, there is a right angle here, and I'll just kind of color that in so you can see it. So we have a right angle here, but we don't here because it's a little bit more angled to go underneath the arm and it's we have a little bit longer 
uh, seam, longer curve here. All right, so on this one, this one is the back, and this one has a little bit longer of a line coming straight down from the back. So what I did is I went straight down for about th three inches, then I dotted it in over here, then I did another line from the um, the new underarm straight across, and where those two meet, I then went in seven eighths. And from that seven eighths, I angled it back to the side seam, and I angled it up to meet up with the uh, line that comes straight down the back. Okay, does that make sense for the armhole? Okay. Now, there is something that we didn't do last time that I'm going to do right now, and I'm going to show you how to make sure your side seams are balanced. Okay, now this can be tricky because if they're not balanced, then you have to go back to the drawing board or back to the dress form. And you have to find out where there was a problem and why their seams aren't, in, aren't balanced. So I'm going to do this with the idea that I hope mine are balanced. So let me just put this up here and show you how to do that. I'm going to leave it pinned so you can, and then I'll show you how to pin them back together. Okay, so what we do to see if it's balanced, and I will use a different color so we don't get confused, but what you're going to do is you are going to do a straight line from your side seam, okay, and you just want to straighten that up, okay, and this line really should be um, I'm just going to move it over like that. So it should be parallel instead of front. But actually, mine's not going to be. Let me just see if this is parallel. It's no. So make it more of a right angle. Okay. There we go. Okay. So what I did is I just did kind of a right angle here and went straight up on both sides. And then just pick um, <coughs> from those lines, pick out like maybe three or five inches, let's say. So let me go over five inches here and five inches here. And let's see if what you want are trying to find out is if you are the same distance from that line on both sides. Okay. So when I measure that here, I'm about a half an inch. And here, I'm, well, with these thick lines, I'm a half an inch. But these lines are like an eighth of an inch wide. So th I can see here that this is just a little bit narrower than this one, but maybe by a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm not going to worry about that. And that's how we just test test to see if I've got the same angle. Okay, so that's something you'll want to do is make sure it's balanced. All right, now you're ready to pin them together. And when we pin them together, you're going to fold one side under and you're going to put it over top of the other side. Okay, and this, they should match up. Okay, and then so I'm just going to take this off. All right. All right. So just turn one seam under, line it up to the other, and what's our rule for pinning the pattern, the draped pattern together before we put it on the dress form? Where do we, where do I put the pins? perpendicular to the seam that you are pinning. Um, so if, if you are trying to remember, you know, when you start working on different seams, it's like, wait, how do I do this seam or that seam? Just remember that if whatever direction the seam runs, your pins are perpendicular to that seam. Okay, so when we put this back on the dress form, 
it is not really pinned to the dress form except in a few places so that it won't fall off. Okay, so we don't have this, it's not going to be pinned all the way down the side seam or anything like that. Okay. Now why would we put them perpendicular? Any ideas? Why can't I just go ahead and put them running the same direction as the seam? Okay, it will bubble on the seam line. When you put a pin in here, a pin is very rigid. Fabric is not. Fabric is fluid. And our bodies are soft. So we put these rigid pins in. So we want it to have as small of a contact point as possible. So that's why we're just doing it perpendicular. So I've got one here at the neck one at the shoulder and one in between. I've got one at the bottom, under the arm, at the waist, and then one in the middle. And that's all I need to pin them together. And then when I put them on the dress form, I'm going to line up my marks. And I'm just going to pin it probably at center front, at the top, and at the bottom. And I added my extra quarter inch, so now I'm just going to pin it to the middle of the tape. it up here at the neck and I added the seam allowance after so when I pin it it's going to look like it's a lot looser okay and that's because it is so I'm going to pin it at the top I'm going to pin it down here at the waist and I'm just going to leave it there that's all I really need Okay, and then when I, I could pull this over here, I could maybe pin this again if I need to. But now that I have ease, notice how the arm hole is a little bit further away from the dress form. And notice how we have a little bit of length now along here. Because I've now moved that line up to the middle. And so, and also the darts are, the darts just skim over up to the bust. If you wanted a dart that was really fitted to the dress form, then you would have to start doing curved darts, okay? Like you learned in intermediate, the S-shaped dart. And for garments that are really closely fitted, like wedding dresses, prom dresses, evening type wear, you can make it much more fitted. But for just an everyday design, it's going to stand out a little bit from the dress form. So that's kind of what you're going to have, all right? Looks lovely. I'm sure that she would like to wear this tonight when she goes out, but we're, she's not. We're going to take it off. Anyway, any questions on the bodice front and back? All right, we're going to go um, and talk about how to design a bodice using some of your own creativity, but what we want to focus on is darts, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take our fabric, okay, and I'm going to design on this side, okay, so that means I need my one inch mark over on this side, okay, so I'm going to put that in. Okay, and what other mark should I do for bodice front? Okay, we need a crosswise mark, don't we? Let me just mark in an inch here, and here, and then here, and then I'll take this ruler, it's longer, and we're going to put the lengthwise grain in, okay, and then because I'm designing for the front piece, what was my cross grain? <coughs> How did I determine my cross grain last time? First of all, where's my cross grain line going to be? Lengthwise grain, crosswise line is right here at the bust, which is about halfway. Now, if you are designing or working on your bodice front, make sure you have this line here. Why do I have bias tape here? I think I forgot to talk about that when I first Is did the bodice front. Eaves? 
Because what? Was it for ease? Ease? Yeah, pretty much. But when you guys wear tops that cover the whole front, does it go in between down and over and around? It doesn't. It doesn't dip in this valley. It just kind of skims across and goes like this. The only time that we have clothing that goes into this valley is if it's a diagonal line, usually. Okay? Or like maybe a halter top or something like that. Um, but other than that, we pretty much, our clothing just skims across and around. So in order to um, do the bodice, you need to have this line here that goes straight across. And what you'll do is you'll just look for the bust point on both sides and then put your twill tape there and make it fairly, you know, taut so that you can just kind of go over top. All right? Okay, I just wanted to review that real quick. Okay, so we're going to do our cross grain, and I'm just going to do my measurement really quick. And I have 26, 27 inches, so that is, what, 13 and a half. So I'm going to do 13 and a half. And then I'm going to do a right angle seam and a line across here. Okay? All right, what else do I want to put on here before I put it up in the dress form? Do you remember what else we did? We, right, we did center front. Let's label that. Okay. Do I want any other marks or lines on here? Bus point, okay, and remember on the bus point, we measured straight across, and then we divided it in half, and I have seven and three eighths, so that's three and a half plus three sixteenths, okay, so that's um, three and a half plus three sixteenths, one, two, three, okay, and then we added an eighth of an inch for just a little bit of ease right through there. So when I do that, okay, so that's 3 and 13 sixteenths. All right? Perfect. Okay, so let me put that, put that line on. And with my fat pin, not too great. Okay, then we did another line, but I am not going to worry about the other line because we are going to do a little bit of designing here. So with our darts. So the first thing I want you to do for this assignment is to draw me a picture of where you want your darts. Okay, now we have a little rule that if we design and we don't use the lines on the dress form, we need to put those lines in, right? When we did our collars, we all used Sutash braid to design it so we could follow it. So we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to take some Sutash braid and we're going to put decide where our darts can we'd like our darts to be. What are some ideas that we could do for that? Okay, we could do a French dart, which means it's going to come either out right out of the 